God's plan. They call me. Hey, Black Ron, are you available to feature this weekend? No, the, the, the guy before me, he wasn't able to do it all weekend. That's what it was. Are you able to feature this weekend? Yeah. Um, six shows. You can do all weekend? Yeah. All right. Uh, first show is Thursday, 8 o'clock. Be here. You'll be featuring for Dick Gregory. Wow. Big. Man. We talking about my idol. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk. Specific time or, or, or time in your life to do something. If it's never too late to go back to college, it's never too late to start a new career path. So it's how old never, were you? I was 25 when I Which started. Which is good. For me, but you, you couldn't do I was just early. grown enough to have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and so when it takes off and you how do you end up dealing with Wild and Out? How do you end up dealing with 85 South guys like a Chico Bean? Uh, how do you end up meeting? Did you you and Ricky Smiley ever do some stuff together? I'm touring with Ricky right now. Okay, let's talk about this stuff, man. Let's get it out here. So shout out to Ricky Smiley. Shout out to Ricky Smiley, man. Uh, praying for you, dog. I, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Praying praying for you. He, he definitely been th going through something lately. I was about to say I went down there to uh, Birmingham and linked up with a few of his uh, people that he rocked with, huh? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it. So shout out to comedian A. G. White okay. from Brooklyn, New York. A.G. White was down uh, performing at Addison Improv. And then Lee was doing Fat Tuesdays. Yeah. Totally. I was a regular at Fat Tuesdays. I'm murdering it. Um, I featured right before A.G. went on stage. A.G. come tell me, dude, you dope. You need to leave Dallas. Year later, A.G. White comes back. I'm doing that same show. Mm. He said, yo, you been on the road? I said, nah, I ain't, I ain't had the chance. I ain't had the money to get out there. He said, yo, if I come back to Dallas <laughs> and, and you haven't you left here. Dallas, <laughs> lose my fucking number. Wow. Right after that, comedian Mario Torrey from Atlanta comes and performs at uh, Comedian Q used to do a show called uh, We Got Next at, at Hyenas. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mario Torrey headlines. I put, I feature for him. He said, man, if you ever in Atlanta, hit me up. I get a wild hair in my ass one day. Got a cousin that used to live in Atlanta. He said, man, if you ever in Atlanta, you got a place to stay. Got another dude to say, man, if you ever get down to Atlanta, I got $100 for you for every show you do. Wow. That's big. Next thing you know, I done bought myself a $40 Greyhound ticket to Atlanta. Rode that Greyhound bus 22 hours. Pull up in Atlanta. My man CJ come pick me up. Board me at his house. Go do Mario Torres' room. Go do all these rooms. Next thing you know, hey, man, you funny, bro. Hey, you need to come here. So when you go to a city and you wreck, all the comedians, hey, got another spot for you. You want $50 in some chicken wings? I, I got a spot for you tomorrow. I got a room I host. I got $50 in chicken wings for you so you can accumulate nice little rent money mm -hmm. and a nice little two-week grind. You know, you do three, four rooms a night, two, three rooms a night for about two weeks and you're in that town. Also, in that town is going to be somebody from somewhere else that's also in town knocking around. So mm -hmm. that's why your network starts to build. So I went from Atlanta to Chicago, from Chicago to New York, from New York to Detroit, Went all around. And you didn't come back home? Didn't come home until almost Christmas. So it was a whole year? No, I just, I would, I would pop back home, pay rent, okay. you know, see my lady, see my daughter, you know, get back on the road. Get home, comedy club that never gave me an opportunity, called me. The feature that they first called was sick. Second feature they called was out of town. Third feature they called couldn't get a ride. It was too last minute. God's plan. They called me. Hey, Black Ron, are you available to feature this weekend? No, the, the, the guy before me, he wasn't able to do it all weekend. That's what it was. Are you able to feature this weekend? Yeah. Um, six shows. You can do all weekend? Yeah. All right. Uh, first show is Thursday, 8 o'clock. Be here. You'll be featuring for Dick Gregory. Wow. Big. Man. We talking about my idol. Yes. So when they told you that, did you like flip out? Of course, not on the phone, but as soon as you hung up the phone. I would have flipped out if it weren't for the fact that I got walked into comedy by an idol. Yeah. Mm. That's all. First time I ever touched a comedy stage, I featured for Shucky Ducky. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Quite, so I quite. was already used to being around people that I admired for doing this. But I admired Dick Gregory for something way past comedy. Right. Yeah. I admired him for who Education. the man he was. You know educates. what I'm saying? The, 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 the consciousness, the wokeness. Right. You know, that's why I followed Dick Gregory. Like, I was a disciple. So, that's hard. wait a minute, I know you lying to me. I, I think you're pranking me. I'm thinking, y'all must be pranking me because my friends know that I fucks with Dick Gregory. And by this time, 
the local comedians were calling me the Malcolm X of comedy by now. That's all. They were doing it as a joke, you know, because Black Ron get on stage, he liable to say something deep. He be killing the crowd, and then he liable to want to preach at the end. Why this nigga just can't do jokes? I don't know. He just got to preach for 10 minutes at the end, and he the Malcolm X of comedy, and it took off as a joke, and then I just adopted it. Like, no, nah, but for real, I am. Because if you look at Malcolm in his life, and, and what, he, what, what led to the man he became, so, the story's almost the same with me. So now I got Dick Gregory right in front of me, who tells me, I heard you call yourself the Malcolm X of comedy. Wow. Yes, sir, I do. Well, you know, I knew that man. He was one of my best friends. That's all right. Yes, sir, I know that. But if you're going to wear his name, don't do his name no disservice. That's big. Don't put no stain on that man's name. So from that point on, comedy was live or die with me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.